Okay, so I had some preconceptions on what I thought this sneaker was going to feel like in hand, what it was going to be like, and uh, now that I have them, it's exactly what I thought. But let's pull these out, let's take a look, let's see what they're all about, because let me tell you, I am very excited about this color blocking. So without further ado, let's jump into today's pair of sneakers, and of course that is the Jordan 1 Shadow 2.0. Alright, so a very quick unboxing for you guys because you know exactly what the box is. I mean, it's a Jordan 1 box, the black and the red. I will give you a look at that size tag for anybody who happens to care. Other than that, let's just pop the top off and let's get straight into today's video. And of course, God, it smells like glue. <laughs> the Jordan 1 Shadow 2.0. Wow, let me just start off by saying like this colorway is super clean. This is definitely a color blocking I'm a big fan of. Just take a look at that, man. That's, I mean, even compared to the 1.0 or the first one, like the more gray, I think actually looks really good. So these released over the weekend on Saturday and they retail for the regular 140 pounds here in the UK or $170 if you're out in the US. So yeah, the Shadow 2.0, of course the predecessor to the first Shadow. Uh, are we calling that a 1.0 now? I don't know. Either way, this one has uh, some more grey on it. So there's some extra panels on here that just make it a little bit more grey. There definitely is a decent amount of differences between this one and the first one. And I should probably start by saying, I mean, the materials. That's going to be kind of the biggest preconception I had of this shoe. I was looking at the images and I was like, you know what, the leather on these just doesn't look great. And that's just based off of the pictures that I saw and then again obviously getting them in hand yeah they, they don't feel great But of course the materials on here might not even be a big deal for you guys. Like for me personally, I'm a big fan of uh, nice feeling leather quality, particularly on uh, Jordan 1s. And uh, yeah, this one just, I mean, it, it's kind of comparable to the Mocha Jordan 1s, but I would say even that, it's just, it just feels a little bit plasticky. Like the last one we got, the Jordan 1 Patina, that actually had some really nice leather quality and it just it always seems strange to me with Jordan 1s why they vary in materials. Like I'm not talking about when they actually change up the materials completely and they add, I don't know, a uh, patent leather or something like that. But I'm just talking about the general ones that have regular leather, you know, the ones where they could use the same leather. Like, like the Mochas and these ones, I feel like they could have just added better leather on here or at least just better leather to the point where we can feel a difference. You know, you want that supple feeling when you're pressing it down on the toe box, uh, not like this where there's hardly any wrinkles and it just, yeah, it, it just doesn't feel that good. So if, yeah, if you're someone who doesn't really care about the feel of the pair of shoes in hand and you're just like, yo, this is a dope color blocking, I'm chucking them on feet, I don't care about how supple and nice the leather quality is when you feel it in hand, that's fine. Do you? And I understand it from that point. However, for me personally, it's definitely not a deal breaker, but it is something I would like 
to have is better leather quality. But either way, the color blocking, like I said, is just so clean on here. Like I would have no issues wearing this any season. Like I would rock this in the summer, rock this in the winter. Like this is something you can throw on with so many different outfits. And I think that's why I like this color blocking so much. So for the actual materials that you're getting on here, well, all of the really nice light gray that you find on here, which is around the mud guard up on the eye stays towards the back of the sneaker and of course the Nike swoosh. Well, that comes in a very uh, short kind of suede or nubuck material. I would say it kind of feels like the mochas in hand. A light little bit of fuzz to it when you're rubbing it. It feels generally soft, nothing insane by any means. Uh, and then of course you get to this black leather which you find over the toe box, the medial and the lateral side, and then of course up around the ankle area. And that is probably where I have the biggest issue in terms of the actual feel in hand. Uh, the black leather is probably the main part that I don't think feels that great. Like if they added just a little bit of a softer, nicer feeling leather to the black material, I would be fine and I really wouldn't care and it would be nice. Uh, but again, they didn't. It's not a deal breaker necessarily for me, but it is something I would have liked them to consider. The gray tone or the gray hue that you find on this 2.0 version is definitely a little bit lighter to the 1.0. Uh, that's a pro or a con. Uh, I believe it's a pro. I kind of like how light this gray is. It just goes with the black super, super well. You're getting the regular Jordan 1 tongue coming in the kind of mesh material with the regular Jordan 1 tongue tag at the top, which of course is Nike Air. And that comes in a nice gray as as well. You get two different lace options. You get the all over black color or you get the gray color, which uh, you know what? I actually think both of them go hard. Like I would probably over the lifespan of wearing this shoe, just keep swapping them out between gray and black. Hey, who knows? Maybe do one gray and one black. I might just get that crazy. But yeah, two solid lace options. If you happen to care about that, either colorway is going to look really dope. Now the midsole comes in all over white with the black Jordan 1 traction pattern, keeping it very, very simple and very, very clean. When it comes to sizing for the Jordan 1, I personally go a true to size and that is kind of what I would recommend for you guys. If you haven't tried a Jordan 1 on, you should be fine, generally speaking, going with your true to size. And of course, it says the same for this uh, colorway. And then of course, if you missed out on this pair and you didn't hit for retail like I didn't hit for retail, uh, well, the resale prices are not actually too bad. Generally speaking, you're looking at about 30 to 50 pounds over retail on the resale market. So I do imagine that this will go up in time, kind of following the suit of the first one. But yeah, as of right now, it's probably in the next week or so a good time to grab yourself a pair of these if you did miss out for retail like myself. I feel like you're going to be able to rock this with so many different outfits. So if you're someone who's a little bit more selective with your Jordan 1s and you don't buy every single colorway, I think this one is definitely one that you're going to get a lot of wear out of. And I think it just generally speaking looks Look super clean. But again, that's all down to you whether you like this or you don't like it. I would like to know what you think about these. So let me know down in the comments what you think of the Jordan 1 Shadow 2.0. But that pretty much wraps it up. It's a Jordan 1. It's a clean colorway. The materials definitely take some points away from it. But again, let me know what you think. But either way, thank you so much for coming through, hanging out for yet again another video. I do appreciate you guys. Thank you for liking, commenting, and of course subscribing. I'll catch you guys in the next one. But until then.